Hi there, Gemma again. Um, just a quick one. Um, this one is going to be relatively quick, but I wanted to share something that I believe will encourage you in terms of understanding the strength of God's salvation, the integrity of God's salvation, the, the security of the salvation we have in the Lord. The reason why I'm saying this is because many people think of God having baby fingers or baby hands. You know, he can't hold on to stuff. He, 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 you know, nobody can pluck anyone out of his hands, but you and I can jump out of his hands. You know, we say these things. It's interesting, by the way, um, just a quick digression. It's interesting that the, the believers who say these things never speak of themselves in the context of falling away. They always speak about this with regard to other believers, but no, no, it's not possible for them to fall away. I deem this some sort of bizarre pseudo-spiritual snobbery in that we believe that, or these people believe that um, it is through their own effort that they are right before God and that other believers who don't make the effort to be right before God will lose out. And I wanted to just show something to you about how that when the Bible says of all that he received, he lost none. This is true. And this is exemplified. And I only discovered this very recently through um, another preacher, actually Chuck Mesler. And I, I thought it was important that I share with this with you. And believe you me, um, I could not recommend him highly enough. Having said that, when it comes to the areas of healing, Chuck Mesler was not entirely certain. He didn't deny it, but he wasn't entirely certain. He was always looking for evidence and so on. But beyond that, I love the man to bits. I absolutely love the man. So if you look at Revelation chapter 7 from verse 1. So this is around the start of the tribulation period. This is around the start of the seven years of tribulation. It says after this. So the, when it says after this in chapter 6, we see the opening of the six seals, right? And it says, after this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, restraining the four winds of the earth, so that no wind could blow on the earth or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel rising up from the east, who had the seal of the living God. He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who were allowed to harm the earth and the sea. Don't harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we seal the servants of our God in their, on their foreheads. And I heard the number of the seal, 144,000 sealed from every tribe of the Israelites. Now, by the way, I'm not, I'm not necessarily talking about the, the sealing of the servants of God here. But I should just say that this is not the church, by the way. Um, this is not the Jehovah's Witness 144,000 who are going to inherit the earth either. This is 144,000 Jewish believers who, after the rapture, will be set apart, will believe on Christ, will be set apart um, for his protection and for his purposes, okay? And if you read later on, you know, not just here in chapter 7, but other chapters of the book of Revelation, you see more episodes about them. But the point here is, look at what it says. It says in verse 3, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we seal the servants of our God on their foreheads. In other words, trouble is about to start and an angel says to them, the, this angel in verse 2 says, Then I saw another angel rising up from the east who had the seal of the living God. He says, He cried out in a loud voice to the four angels who are allowed to harm the earth and the sea. Don't harm the earth or the sea or the trees until we seal the servants of our God on their foreheads. Okay? By the way, I should just digress by adding that many people make this assumption that the period of the great tribulation, the period of tribulation is about Satan's wrath and God's wrath. And that God saves, um, God saves, God has not appointed us to his wrath, but we are going to experience Satan's wrath. Friends, that's not true. All of the seven years of tribulation is started, authored, and ended by God. Think about it. Who opens the seals? Who opens the book and starts to pronounce judgment on the world? The first, the, the seven seals are opened by the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God who is who takes away the sin of the world is the one that, that uh, opens this. Anyway, I digress. The point I'm making or I was making before is that in verse 4, or rather verse 3, we see verse 4, 
we see the ceiling of the 144,000 virgins, right? Then look at chapter 14. So remember, that happens at the beginning of the tribulation period. Then look at chapter 14. Then I looked, from verse 1, Then I looked, and there was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Now take note, I did not say this. Then I looked, and there was the Lamb, standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 143,959. I did not say there were 143,999. I did not say there were 142,750. I said there were 144,000 who had his name and his father's name written on their forehead. Now, in, Ma in Revelation 7, which was close to, if not at the very beginning of the tribulation period, of the seven years of trouble coming upon this world, they call it the the um, the 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 times of Jacob's troubles, right? Or the week of Jacob's troubles, or the times of ja the time of Jacob's troubles, right? There were one hundred and forty-four thousand that were sealed. By the time Jesus comes back, seven years later, at the request of the Jews, the believing Jews. According to Hosea chapter 5 verse 15, according to various other scriptures, I, I dealt with this in the video before. By the time he comes back, we have, he says in verse 1, Then I looked and there was the Lamb, who has now come back, second coming, standing on Mount Zion, and with him were 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. At the beginning of the period of seven years, you had 144,000 sealed. At the end of the seven years, toward the end, when Jesus Christ comes back, there's 144,000 still there. He has not lost one. He did not lose one. Of, the, of all those that the Father gave to me, I have lost none. I have lost none. Jesus doesn't lose people, friends. He doesn't. He does not. Look at John chapter 18, verse 9. That thy same may be, may be fulfilled which is speak of them which thou gavest me, I lost none. I lost none. Friends, if you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you are secure. It is not your conduct that will cause you to be taken away. I want you to have good conduct because I want you to be rewarded. I want to be rewarded on that day. Not so much rewarded with all sorts of things. There will be various crowns that God will give to us. But it's not so much the reward I'm looking for. I'm just looking for those words. Well done, that good and faithful servant. That, oh gosh, that, those words... To hear those words would be a dream come true. Believe me. And I'm not trying to be humble here. I'm, I'm just saying it as it is. This has been my desire for a long time. But then there will be those who, according to 1 Corinthians 3, maybe perhaps called carnal Christians, who will still be saved, yet as, though, yet as ones who are passing through the flames. In other words, they'll be passing down the fire as they're, as they're coming into the kingdom because they pass through the flames. The point is, it's not so much that they're passing through real fire. The point is, they did not live such a good life, but they were saved by the skin of their teeth. Why were they saved? Because of the promised Holy Spirit. Of all that Jesus gave, or of all that Jesus is given, he, lo he loses none. And the reason why you know you'll make it on that day is because you are sealed. You are marked for him. You are sealed. Remember that, friends. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Be encouraged. Have confidence in the salvation that Jesus Christ wrought for you on the cross. Because by that salvation, you are, you are saved. And by the seal, you are marked for the day of redemption. And on that day, you will hear your name when it's called. God bless you. Bye. Good night.